Welcome to the Woman Who Left podcast. Hello, Andrea and Donna. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, this is my Hi. first um, double interview I've ever done. So um, bear with me if like I'm um, <laughs> lost with all these questions. I was going to do it kind of like um, alphabetical. So Andrea, any questions, maybe if you answer them first or if you don't want to, you can swap about. I'm not really that bothered. I'm pretty laid back. So just take it from there. Um, I'll start then just with um, getting used to introduce yourself. So um, Andrea, if you want to introduce yourself for everybody who doesn't and does know you. <laughs> um, so I'm Andrea Thompson. I am four times Britain's Strongest Woman, uh, 2018 World's Strongest Woman. And I hold the current log record of 135 kilos. And Donna, yourself? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> and um, I'm Donna Moore, um, three times World's Strongest Woman. Um, what else? Arnold Pro winner. Uh, Atlas Stone World Record holder at the moment, um, Dumbbell, Circus Dumbbell World Record holder and things, I don't know, <laughs> other things. I missed one, I oh, missed one on the um, elephant bar, deadly. Oh yes, yes, I, I have actually asked one of all the questions I have there. That's there, why I was waiting for, for your pausing for you to say it. Come on, Andrea. Sorry, need sorry. props. <laughs> <laughs> talking about yourself, isn't it? <laughs> you never know what they say. Um, I have nothing that interesting to say. So, but I, uh, anyway, so the next question I wanted to ask is was, what sports did you do before you done Strong Woman? Um, I was doing CrossFit for a while, for about two years. Um, and that was just, uh, I was getting ready to be a bridesmaid for my sister's wedding. Um, she wanted to lose weight, so we tried to do it together. And I was almost like headhunted by one of the trainers that said that I was quite strong and I should go and try strong things. And that's what I did. Um, and then six weeks later, I was third in Britain, um, just after a few weeks of training. So it just snowballed from there. Wow. <laughs> and on yourself. Um, no, not really. I didn't do much sport before. Just uh, I used to go to the regular gym classes like body pump and body attack, uh, things like that, mainly just to lose weight and be happier and then kind of progressed into the strong things like Andrea just kind of like fell into it by accident. And uh, here we are. The only things I did when I was younger, I had horses. So I used to horse ride and um, I used to be quite good at swimming. So I probably that's probably where I would have ended up if um horses and being in the orchestra weren't more important at the time <laughs> so uh yeah I didn't uh, I didn't stick with that <laughs> so and now I don't go swimming anymore particularly mainly because it'll upset my eyelashes if I'm honest so uh it's, uh, <laughs> it's not, not something that we should do but other than that that's it no not really no not particularly sporty as the sense of a lot of other strong women athletes have come from other sport and was there anything that particularly got you interested in strong women like have you had like watched it over the years if he's always known about it um I the only thing I kind of had was when I was younger um there was like a strong man event happening in the pub car park and my mum <laughs> got involved and she was carrying the kegs the barrels across the car park the same as the guys was apart from that I'd never paid any attention to strong man I didn't even know that strong woman was a thing when I when I started so um and even like years later, I've only kind of <laughs> started following Strongman. Um, I guess because I'm involved in the sport quite heavily now, I probably should know who's doing what and, <laughs> and the, the faces that I see, I should recognise them. Um, but I, I never really paid any attention, never watched it on TV um, up until a few years ago. So apart from the little the little snippet I had from my mum carrying the kegs in the car park, I hadn't didn't, didn't really knew anything about it. Was your mum competing in that event? I don't like really know. Day. I must have been quite young. I remember just being quite young. Whether she was competing or whether she was just showing off, I don't know where I get that from. Um, <laughs> um, so I don't really know. I just remember seeing her doing it. It was just the one event. It was just carrying the cakes across the car park. Um, and it was almost like farmer's walk style as well. So I don't even know what that was all about. Yeah. No, that was just, that was your mum. That was your mum being awesome. Of course, that's, that's what it was. Not my mum just showing story. off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <doing> weird stuff. 
And um, yeah, I used to watch uh, The World's Strongest Man all the time. My dad really enjoyed watching it. And um, I did watch The World's Strongest Woman. It was on the television twice when it used to be. That's what we're aiming for <laughs> back again. Uh, it was 20 years ago now. Uh, but it was on the television the same as the guys. So I remember watching that and thinking that the ladies and that was like amazing. And I was older then, I was like 20. So I was thinking that that was great, but it wasn't anything that I thought that I would ever be doing. But I just remember looking at it thinking that this was really cool and that I was in actual in love with Jill Mills. So um, yeah, that's that I did know about the sport, I suppose, in that sense, but not any way of how to get into it. It was just there it was on the television and that was about it. Yeah. And when did the two of you realize you were both like mighty strong? <laughs> <laughs> Only a few years ago. To be <laughs> I was like, um, it wasn't it wasn't straight away because I was new at it and um, I was being beaten quite a lot when I when I first um, started the sport. So I didn't actually think I was going to be good enough to stay in the sport. And I get bored so quickly of everything that I do. So I'm surprised <laughs> that I'm still doing the sport. Um, I think, yeah, I, I've never really realised I was strong. I think probably when I won World's Strongest Woman, so that was three years ago, so I was three years into the sport when I kind of thought, actually, I might be quite good at this. And then the buzz kind of continued, and I you know, just continued to get stronger from then. Um, and for me, I think I've always thought that I have been relatively strong just because of having horses and doing like farm stuff, which is why at the minute I'm taking the mick out myself doing these wheelbarrow things on uh, Instagram <laughs> yeah, because that's so like cool. literally my <laughs> my whole life before. Um, so I kind of suppose I've been like functionally strong and I could always throw the shot put really far at, at school sports day and stuff like that. But um, I'm the same as Andrea when I first like started out, it wasn't like an easy ride, you know, a lot. I say well other people can kind of come in and they win from the very start it's kind of been like a, a gradual a gradual process really it's uh been like a long slog and Andrew and I would talk about that quite often <laughs> <laughs> I suppose like you had you kind of have to build like a foundation first to kind of build on as well like you can't just yeah you're some people are naturally Excuse just me. strong but you still have to work on it too don't you and it's yeah I think so. I think you do having a, a, some sort of foundation is going to be beneficial um some people are just going to be freakishly strong but they again it's not all about just being strong you need to know what you're doing with this stuff yeah um you know I've, I know powerlifters that think that they're really strong and want to try and do strongman and it's just completely different style of training um so yeah I think you do have to have some sort of foundation of either lifting or just being strong to yeah, be able to I do the sport the and then learning medleys like you have to be kind of what's the word conditioned as well like, fit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah kind of need to be sort of uh like functionally fit and like andrea just said that it's like learning a skill a skill set about everything so like some people can come and say uh olympic lifting and with a straight bar and stuff they can clean and jerk it especially well but like a log doesn't react in the same way as a barbell mm. does. So you really kind of have to rethink your technique about everything that you're doing. So um, it's a like a learning curve, I suppose. Uh, uh, the Arnold competition that we're going to um, next, it has a Viking press in it and they don't come along very often, do they? So no. it's like, mm. that's a thing that we're all having to relearn and also they've changed the rules for it too. So oh, right. whereas it's like against the law to double dip or push jerk a bike and press, <laughs> they've decided that that's okay. So like my mind's totally blown <laughs> over the last couple of weeks going, what, what even is that? I feel, I feel terrible that this is something that I'm doing on this like sacred law, but here we go. So it is like about learning different things. I don't know what Andrea thinks about it. I'm the, like, you know, I, 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 with every, it. Com every competition that I do, I, I think I have to learn something new. Um, you know, like, like you say, the, the Viking press doesn't come along very often, um, and I, I don't know, know, even know how to double dip or jerk, <laughs> so I don't know if my body will even allow me to do it, if it's going to help me do an extra couple of reps, I don't know, so um, it, it, I, I'm learning to kind of do that, to make my body do that, and if it works, it works, if it doesn't, I'll just stick what I'm used to, mm -hmm. um, but every competition does bring its challenges, um, they do change the rules for <laughs> different <laughs> promoters, um so what we've kind of been used to all of a sudden we're not allowed to or we can do mm -hmm. so it's um it is really paying attention to the rules and asking the questions mm -hmm. at the at the start and making the rules work 
work for you if you know what you can and you can't do sometimes it works out uh more in your favor such as carrying a sandbag for approximately five minutes so it's uh you know if if you know that you can stop and rest um, that's what i was going to say that one you like can, uk you or the uk's <laughs> yeah yeah or if you just stop when you run out but if you had a had a rest and then carried on then you would have got more points you know what i mean so it's uh it is uh paying attention to what's said yeah and that's learning as well too. you kind yeah. of have to learn to be tactical as well i think as you progress mm -hmm. it's not just about going in and doing what the event says on the sheet it's being you have to learn to be tactical with it nowadays yeah mm -hmm. the, the, the competition is just so close it really is and you know you could if you know that it's going to take everything out of you to get x amount of reps on something whereas you probably know like i would out press andrea so i probably wouldn't try so that's the you know that's the difference with that and andrea probably wouldn't want try to out at the stone me because it's probably not going to work out that way either <laughs> but it's um it's just the way that you know your competition and you know what you're going into so instead of spending all that time me trying to like press a giant log it's not going to it's not going to work out so i'm, I'm not going to do it i'm going to take the best points that i can possibly get for that event and save it for the next thing that's coming up and how did you just meet each other through the sport, you seem to be really good yeah. <laughs> That, that's well, the thing. There's like a, a massive myth that we that we yeah, actually yeah. hate each other, um, <laughs> you know. But we do chat quite a lot. We, yeah. you know, we are competitors at the end of the day, and we do have that competitive friendship. But mm -hmm. when we're not competing, we're just two normal people that will just have a catch up. Um, yeah, so, yeah. I definitely yeah. agree. And, and when the competition's like over and done with, it's just like, right, what 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 are me and Andrew going to do? Well, we're just going to go. How much drink. can we drink? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go drink gin somewhere usually in america <laughs> so it's um um we, we like people say oh, oh you, you mustn't like each other no i was like oh no i like andrew we, we got on okay but like she just said and um, when we're competing we're competing and the rest of the time we're just like parents with kids that talk about what parents with kids do and other just like old woman stuff so yeah. it's just that's <laughs> the way it is <laughs> and you both work like you both work full time hours as well, don't you? As well as train full time, like where do you get like where do you get the bloody time <laughs> to do everything? Like it's just it, it baffles me. Like how you are both working full time, both professional athletes, and like I know you have sponsorships and all that. Um, not take away from all that, but like. I just it's it's just mad I just can't get my head around <laughs> I actually only work part-time um okay. I have tried to work full-time I just don't have the time to do it so um I'm thankful that I have a decent job that I can just do part-time work and um do have the children at home and I train four days a week but I've also started coaching as well now so it takes up a little yes. bit more time um so yeah thankfully I, I don't have I don't have time to work full-time <laughs> sometimes I don't even have time to work part-time so yeah it's, it's tough you do have to it's quite regimental and even though I, I do work part-time my life is still very much down to the diary everyone has to be in the right place at the right time no one can be off school sick because I have to go to the gym or I have to go and train <laughs> um no one can mess up my schedule because it just it messes it up for the whole day and when you have that kind of discipline um and nothing else matters <laughs> especially when you've got a competition coming up at the moment it's just like I, that's all I can see at the moment mm -hmm. work is just something I have to do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um well I'm Nicole I'm, I think I'm like you that I work for the NHS so um my shifts at the minute have been quite busy and it's been quite a, a testing time so again like Andrea my life is quite regimented of what it does literally around a shift pattern and again we're like the last six weeks before our competition so literally that's the only other thing I do with my spare time <laughs> is is that um it does take quite a lot of focus and dedication and a lot of like Andrea just said a lot of time management but we've been doing this a while now so we can you know it gets easier as it goes on to know what you need to do and when and things like that so you know yeah. we've learned we've learned that as we go along and you both have got good coaches as well so I take it do they do you do they give you what you have to do for the whole week um and do you like obviously you stick to it regimentally don't you <laughs> there's no bad oh, days at all no, so no, no, no good days um, <laughs> I when I'm in when I'm in comp prep I do tend to stick to it if I'm if I'm just um in off season or if we've just finished competing then I tend to just 
Um, I like to, I like to refer Loz to having me as on one of those retractable leads, the little doggy <laughs> leads where you can push the button and it reins me back in. Yeah. So I'm often left on a leash and then he just clicks it and I just have to come back <laughs> and do as I'm told. Um, but most of the time I do follow what he says. I do trust everything that he tells me. Um, I have a monthly, four weekly plan, which he will change if I need anything changed. Um, and we do catch up every other day really to see how I'm getting on, especially when I'm this close to comp, he kind of is on, is on the phone every day to see what I'm doing, make sure I'm still training like I should be. <laughs> training and eating and recovering. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, I have Jenny and um, my training's done. I think she has a whole plan, but she just puts it in a week, otherwise I'd be skipping through to see what I might like to do better. <laughs> um, or So I just get my plan every, every week and I can see what I'm doing and I just have to maneuver that around the shift and the time the time that I have. I also have uh, Jack at Spartan who does my main part of my strongman coaching so that's like Andrea had to travel a long way to see Lars. I travel to go and see him um, at the moment it's twice a week um, so that takes up quite a lot of a lot of time and then Dale at 3D strength as well for extra little bits of kit that he's got there that I'm trying to steal at the moment so it uh, we do, I think, I like Andrea, I do what I'm told. It's uh, it's easier to do that. Jenny's can be quite scary. And um, and like Andrea, I trust I have trust in what she's writing for me to do and what my coaches are saying for me to do. So I believe in that and it's worked out well in the past. So I'm sticking with that formula at the moment. What would your adv advice be to somebody like me who's kind of new to it and it's, you know, learning as learning as I go along as well as, doing what I'm told by my coach what would your advice be <laughs> um just yeah I think the coach thing sometimes is a bit of a trial and error you need to have a really good relationship with a coach um you know they you need to get to know them they need to get to know you they need to understand how you work how your mind works you almost have a they become a mentor as well as a coach um I find that Loz has been pretty much been my life coach for the last two years <laughs> Um, so it's not just about what he's putting down on a, on a piece of paper for me to do in the gym. Yeah. He's gauging how I am mentally. Um, <laughs> most of the time it's not very good, but <laughs> he'll kind of, he'll help with that. You know, he'll, he'll help the training fit around how I'm feeling mentally. Um, so a lot of it, like I say, is about trying to know, finding the right person to start off with and then just trusting what they're, what they're doing, um, you know, with their credentials and just trusting that they know what they're talking about. So it's just putting your trust into them really isn't it yeah I totally agree um I suppose we all have the same approach Jenny and I have, were friends uh before she started becoming doing coaching so we have quite a good and it's relationship and it's been quite a long one so again she's a bit life coachy as well and I could just tell her anything about how I'm feeling or what's working for me what's not working for me like Andrea said it's like trust in the the process of who's written your things and building a good relationship so I believe that's what I have with Jenny like Andrea has with with Loz. Cool um so I'll get on to the last competition you've done together was not the world ultimate strong woman in Dubai yeah. isn't that right um mm -hmm. so talk me through the events um of the day <laughs> and your favorite event <laughs> the hour and a half <laughs> the hour and a half wow. that was an intense training session let's put it that way <laughs> Um, so what did we have? We had Andrew um, Log, which yeah. um, let's, let's, break it it. Let's, let's break it down. So the logs yeah, were supposed to be 12 inches, <laughs> um, but they only had one 12 inch. They were going to do two platforms. So they had to make the two logs that they had were 10 inches. Right. So to make the, the diameter a little bit bigger, they wrapped some really chafing rope around the middle of it. Oh, so that's what the so rope made was the about middle of, It made the, the middle of the log 12 inches, but the rest of it was like <laughs> <laughs> And it very awkward. However, we just did what we needed to do. So um, that was for reps, uh, which I won that event. Which you did. Was, <laughs> yeah, I won that. I, I've been really focusing on that event. Yeah, it's and it's a, really, it's a really good event for you, isn't it, as well? Yeah. Um, it was not such a great event for me. And the... Um, 
it's just it's just one of those things. <laughs> so just it's, did the best that done. I could. It's done now. <laughs> a lot of pressure on you, Andrea, that day, I take it. <laughs> oh yeah, but also because Lance was commentating as well. So um, you know, having a coach there who I he couldn't actually coach me, which was quite oh. difficult because he was behind the screen with a you know mic and everything. Um so yeah, the pressure to, to kind of perform <laughs> at my best event was quite high. <laughs> Um, it was it was really interesting though like the setup was really good but one of the things that it was like I found it quite difficult so we were allowed to go and warm up but then we had to stop because then we were doing all of the intros to all of our music so by the time everybody had gone through their whole intros and all of their music and everything else that was happening and then then you have to go and lift 100 kilo logs so my, my body was like right we did this like 20 minutes ago <laughs> why why yeah. why are you waiting that long before you lift it again so um yeah, it was a testing testing time, but it was a nice setup, and I think it looked really cool on the television. Oh yeah, it looked great. Like, we all we all had we all had bleeding chins. It was wonderful. So <laughs> chafing oh, knuckles. You didn't notice it on the TV. I didn't notice anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what did we have? After, what did we have after that? The log yoke. It was the, the yoke. yoke. The yoke. Sorry, the yoke. Yeah. Three hundred kilo yoke for distance. Um, which didn't you win that event? Yeah, I don't know. I was I like, what know. the hell? That's like one of Donna's worst events since you won it. <laughs> it's, like, it's like the worst event. And I said to Andrew before I went, and I was like, because I was obviously later in the lineup of the log, and I was having to go out first in the yoke, and I was like, I swear to God, this is just this is just not what I need in my happiness of life right now. But anyway, we went out, and um, yeah, who knows? I think even Loz's commentary was like, what? Well, oh, <laughs> what, mm. what happened to Donna? So... Yeah, that's, I think, the only time ever in the history of Strongman that I've ever won a yoke event. So if anything else, that's the only thing I'm taking from that entire competition. <laughs> that's it. You'd been working, I don't care about the rest. Yeah, you've been working pretty hard with the yoke. I remember seeing some of your videos on, that, on Instagram. You were, because I think you had said in one of your posts that it would have been one of your, um, I don't want to say worst events because that's yeah, negative, but it, it would have been one that you would have, <laughs> one that you disliked a wee bit more than the rest of them. But I know you yeah. had been working at it. Yeah, I had to, and I have to because, like Andrea said at the start, the competition is so close now. It can't be that you can be such a big gap down on that particular event, especially in a competition that only had was there eight of us. Eight, uh, eight, eight or ten. Uh, yeah. yeah, and when there's when everybody's really good as well, you know, you can't just have things that go wrong or events that are really weak. So I knew that that would be um, a worse event for me I was hoping that the log would have panned out better than it did but it, it didn't and um then we just came, came out to the yoke and I wasn't really looking forward to it but I had talked to, to myself a bit more about it in a positive attitude so that hopefully it would work out and um it, it didn't work out too bad actually so I was pleased with that one particular thing from that <laughs> whole day <laughs> what do we what was after that it was farmers that was drop and turn, wasn't it? Yeah. Just, was that, yeah, just what, both ways. <clears throat> it was. Was it both ways? Yeah, down yeah, and back. I think it was both ways, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, um, that was just what it was. It was just, yeah. the trouble is, <clears throat> so I was, I was really, really upset um, because I, in my last training session uh. out there, I um, tore my calf muscle. Oh, yeah, I tried to play it down quite a bit actually, and I was like, "No, it's just, it's just." Um, I've um, just got cramped, just... Donna, is what she said, and I was like, "All right then, I'm just asking." <laughs> it was pretty horrendous. It went... I went down like I'd been shot, and yeah. I, was, I was nearly sick. And it, Liz was recording it. Liz was recording our training session, and she played it back, and you can actually hear it pop. Oh, was like, it oh, was a... just really gross. It wasn't <laughs> nice. It wasn't nice at all, was it? And I know it's very difficult especially when you're away in somewhere that's hot and you don't have the same people around you that you would normally go to to fix anything so you did really well didn't you it wasn't it, nice yeah, for you it was all. tough and I I, if, I think if Loz wasn't there I would have just not bothered to compete at all no it because I would have made you mental, know. massive mental battle to compete mm. because I was like what's the point I can't walk <laughs> I was literally walking up and down in the pool twice a day just to keep oh. my leg moving um and like, are you and allowed to take painkillers in that at the competition? I was like, on so many painkillers. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone well, going to the hall okay. to get the They should allow to take painkillers. So there was a really good massage therapist who was actually looking after the um, boxers. Was it boxing? Yeah, they were boxing, weren't they? Yeah. 
uh, yeah, he was really good and he was looking after me, um, treating me daily. But I just couldn't, I just knew that the events that were there for that competition were really good for me and I just couldn't perform. No yeah, we said that. We said that at the start, hadn't we? When they released the events, I was like, oh, Andrea, look at these. They're like yeah. super duper. They're well, super duper I could just you. walk in there and just do it. Mm-hmm. But I just couldn't, couldn't perform. I couldn't, I couldn't move fast enough. I couldn't triple extend on the, on the, uh, the stones. Yeah. I just I was trying to do it on one leg. Until... <laughs> it was horrendous. But you were in the top three years anyway, until the last, until the last event. Yeah, to the you? last event. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I was pretty, <laughs> yeah. Did it take you a while to kind of uh, mentally come around from that, Andrea, after the event? Yeah. You know, after the yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, I mean, thankfully, I stayed out in Dubai for a few days after everyone had gone home, so I was able to just process everything that had happened. And I think the only thing that I can take away from it is I didn't give up. I didn't okay. stop. I didn't pull out completely, and I still came fourth. Yeah. one leg <laughs> so <laughs> one I'm leg not completely <laughs> unhappy about it um but it's just you know it's just one of those things it's my first ever like major injury I've never had to deal with anything like that before especially so close to a competition especially one that I focused so hard on doing yeah. um and it was going to be the only competition I was going to do for the whole year so that's how much it meant to me to get a bloody injury and yeah I was I cried actually very heavily that night and got very drunk <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's done now. It's, um, I can take it away to say that, you know, I did really well. I still had a really great experience. I still competed against the best in the world. We had a really, it was a really good show. It looked so it great. Was. It was. Really, really it good. Really, the guys that did it were just amazing. So. Yeah, and that's what we can take away from it, even though about performances and stuff, that it's the first time that we've had, like, all of those people are together in one place, that we had a great platform like the guys did, which doesn't mm-hmm. usually happen either that we were treated really nicely to and that it came across well it was well received if you look through obviously there's like the usual weird comments and nasty things and stuff but a lot of it is really positive and that's one of the biggest things that that event I think has brought for strong women is that they it was shown really well it came across really well and it was received really well so like us on a personal level and we've talked about it that's that's great for us and the yeah, people that are yeah. coming after Andrea and I when we stop doing this it gives them a, a bit more of another pathway to follow that like you know we've done some of the work kind of thing yeah. <laughs> it's, we've done uh, the hard work for you girls <laughs> <laughs> so um, it is a little bit like that yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and what um so what was your favorite events out of the five of the <laughs> <six>? <laughs> Um, oh, do you know what? As much as I couldn't really do do it properly, I quite enjoyed the mystery event. The the oh, yes, yeah, yeah. pole, pole. Put, put yeah. Pole one, wasn't it? It it looked. I mean, if when we were practicing, I was like, "God, oh, this is really heavy." It's actually just mentally you think this is actually really heavy, but don't show face, Andrea. Just <laughs> normal. Um, but actually, when it came to the actual event itself. I quite enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed it. was completely different to what we've ever done before. Mm-hmm. Um, the momentum of the sled itself, it was on it was on tracks and then the uh, the chains kicked in, didn't it, halfway through? Yeah. So you think you're on a roll and then oh, no, there's more weight added to it. And then you have to, it has the same coming back when you're pulling it. So that was my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I enjoyed that event too. Again, like it was like visually, it was a visually good event. I think. To be honest, just enjoyed the just enjoyed the whole thing, really from start to finish. That it was just something great to be involved with, with all of like lovely people, you know. Yeah. Um, and Andrea and I haven't really competed together for for a while either, so it was nice to share yeah. that with her, really. And obviously, another great uh, thing for the UK with Annabelle winning. So well, you know, yeah. that's uh, and you getting second, not forgetting that. <laughs> oh yes, yeah, but it's it's. <laughs> it's you know, it's the representation as well as everybody else. So there's me, Andrea and Annabelle out there. And there we are in the, you know, the very top end of the competition against yeah. other people from the world. So I think Did for, you for a strong the rest woman. Of them before as well? Um, yeah, I had met everybody. Have you met everybody before? Oh, no, I hadn't met Nadia before in real life. Um, I think I kind of maybe said hello in like one of the OSGs. I've not really spoken to mm. her. Um, um, actually, Corey. I don't think yeah. I've met Corey before either. 
Um, yeah, so it's nice to meet other people and they're lovely. They're all lovely people as well. So it's nice to meet um, people who are, who are nice too. <laughs> so that's always a bonus. <laughs> and and it, when there's only, there's only so few of you, you can't really be having that kind of dynamic. Um, it's nice to, you know, get on with everybody and have a chat and see who's doing what and where and even stuff without strong woman, you know, so it's, yeah. it's nice like that. What was the favourite part about being away apart, like other than the strong, the strong woman competing? The sun. The, yeah. <laughs> the heat, the, yeah, the, the cold. I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm definitely meant to be in the sun, and I just was there out and as, as much as I could. Um, mm-hmm. I think one, the, we went to the water park one day, and I think it was about forty-three degrees. Forty-three. It was exceptionally hot, wasn't it? Yeah. I, was, I could feel like my bones getting warm. That's when I know it's warm. It's hot. <laughs> Um, um, I don't know what my favourite part of it was. I think just the whole experience of being a, being away and getting to see people that I hadn't really seen for um, a long time. I'm really friendly with uh, Sonny from Germany and I uh, really like Jessica Fithin too. So it was nice to catch up with her. Cool. Um, so what have I got here? Um, talk a wee bit then about the world records. Um, we can come back to all the rest mm-hmm. of the events. So just mix okay. it up a wee bit. So uh, Andrea, you hold the world record log lift. And you're also in the Guinness World Record now for that as well. Since of course I am, page eighty-five. Couldn't leave that part out either. <laughs> so yeah. tell us, um, um, really, just about the prep leading up to it, um, in a lockdown training over a lockdown, tra- you know, all that crack. How did you find it? Oh, so that was. You know oh. what? It was actually a godsend to be given the opportunity because I was like, I need to do something. I need to train. Um, I, I had access to a friend's garage gym that just had a rack, I think about 150 kilos of weights um, and a couple of dumbbells. And I was like, that'll do, <laughs> that'll do. I can just go somewhere and just just smash out some weights. So when the opportunity came around, I literally was training in this 10 by six foot garage or sometimes outside if, it was, if the weather was okay. Um, so the preparation itself was, it was hard because it was the first time I'd actually Try started training by myself. I'd always had somebody to train with, and all of a sudden, I was just left to my own devices and not knowing if I was doing things properly because I always had somebody in my ear telling me things. Um, it was mentally hard, and but I enjoyed it because it gave me a purpose throughout lockdown. I I struggled mentally um, going through the lockdown process anyway. Just I think most people did, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was fun. And actually doing the record was very odd because it was then in front of an audience, but there was only four people in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so to have, uh, to, to go in to do your max, absolute max lift, you've normally got a crowd around you, noise people and, um, you know, music and judges and it's all very official. And all of a sudden I'm left with a, a laptop in front of me, two of my girlfriends, who are like, yay, go on. Andrew, that's not what you need to hear when you're going up for a really, <laughs> really big lift. Go on, Andrew. Um, and then because um, Sajunas was my referee, <laughs> he was in Lithuania at the time, so there was a bit of a, a delay. Oh, I had to get used to holding the log for a very long time <laughs> to make sure that I got the down lift, and there was about a th- two or three second lag um, to get that. So again, getting it was great, but it felt like just a gym lift because I had no one to celebrate it with um, until obviously you know you start seeing people again and they're talking about it so good to have it and obviously the world uh, Guinness Book of Records picked it up and it met all their standards so I didn't have to do anything again yeah um, oh, would you have done it again if it didn't meet I didn't realize that uh, there were standards for them to meet as well as you left and already holding the world record for god's sake <laughs> yeah you have to ha- there are certain standards like um having an official person refereeing it, making sure that it was um, the, it was weighed and the measurements were all on the screen and that sort of stuff. It was done like a competition environment. Um, I don't know, they just contacted me and said, oh, this is amazing. This has met all our standards. Would you like to be in the book? And I was like, um, yes, <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> so everyone got Guinness Book of Records this Christmas. <laughs> <Do they? Yeah. laughs> Yes, oh. <laughs> yeah, with a little tag in it. This is where yeah. we are. 
I signed my sister's as well. She goes, why did you sign? I was like, because? Because I can, because it's me yeah. and I'm in the book. What do you think? <laughs> Yeah. And you recently yeah. as well, you recently attempted to break that, Andrea, didn't you, there a few weeks ago when a competition, yeah. am I right? So that was um, that was for the Aaron Page Classic uh, competition. It wasn't anything official. I had I was semi-prepping for it. I, I said to Loz I wanted to have a go at it. There was no pressure for me to do it. I wasn't gaining anything from it. I, it was just a really good event that I wanted to have a go at it for. Um had a real bad rookie mistake though and I didn't eat <laughs> it's just, after doing this sport for so long I only had my breakfast about eight o'clock in the morning we didn't start lifting until nearly 12 and I didn't bring any extra nice. things to eat and drink and I was like started to wither away by that point and I because there were so many people doing the log lift we we're warming up and then they're having to go through the lighter weight so my opening lift was 130 kilos so I had to wait for the people to do the 40 kilos and go all the way up so I was you know one of the last to even lift um nearly messed the first attempt up actually 130 I just was a bit rubbish and then the 136 which was 300 pounds that was what I was aiming for um I just couldn't press it got it to my chest twice but I just couldn't press it but it's what it is. I know it's there. I know I can, if I can clean it twice, I know I can press it. So I just have to remember to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe some, maybe something that you're looking at this year then. Um, if the opportunity comes along, yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to put myself under any pressure to do it. I've got quite a few um, comps that I want to do this year anyway. So I don't necessarily think it'll work with prep. Um, if it happens to be in a competition, then I'll I'll go for it then. But at the moment not yet cool and donna you hold the world record stone atlas stone left as 171 kilos isn't that right yeah that's right that yeah crazy. <laughs> <laughs> i want i remember watching you doing that like i was just when you're sitting watching it in the tv and you're cheer, you're cheering you on it's like it's, it's pure class <laughs> it's, <laughs> Andrea, it's, i was cheering I, you on too and i wouldn't get to say that <laughs> just like Andrea said it's um it's weird when there's no like particular people people there obviously I went up to uh uh Luke up in uh Inverness kind of area so that was nice to, to like have them but it's still not the same like it would be like on the stage at the Arnold or something like that yeah. where you've got like people what people watching you and uh it, it was a little bit different but again I'm quite goal orientated like Andrea and it you need to have something to focus on through all that time of not being able to do anything the gym's not really been open and stuff like that it was pretty difficult but it's also another great thing that they did to keep the sport in the spotlight to keep the girls in the spotlight it's uh, another reason to kind of do what we do as well like just raise the profile of things and if it looks cool and it's a thing that I like to do or we like to do then then why not so yes it's that's the record as it stands right now and it's going to be raised by 10 kilo in the Arnold. So we'll uh, <laughs> see what happens there. Are you, yeah. how, so how did you find your prep? So obviously you were in a lockdown and stuff as well. Like did you mm. mentally, like where were you mentally, physically? And Well, there was only really that thing to train for. So like, yeah. Andrea, if you're only thinking on like lifting on one, one thing to do, then it's a lot easier than concentrating on 10 events or over two days or something like that. So and I like them, like Andrea likes log, I like Atlas Stones. It's easier to do something that you uh, enjoy enjoy doing. Um, so I think mine was, was mine the second lock? My, yours was the first lockdown, wasn't it? And then mine was the no, second. Mine, mine, oh yeah, 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 because I did the second one, didn't I? Yeah, so I think <laughs> that the gyms were like slightly more open as I was coming towards like the end of when I was going to be doing it. So I was able to go up to Spartan and practice on the stones and stuff like that. So um and set the the bar heights and things like that so it was nice nice to be able to do that I suppose and actually have a have a go at lifting them although I hadn't lifted that weight stone until that day so that we didn't know quite how it would how it would pan out but it was okay and you <laughs> just the, the bar record. was quite high yeah you hold the record as well in the um dumbbell no yeah dumbbell, isn't it? yeah What's yeah I joined that yeah circus dumbbell um it's dumbbell, another yeah. It's another rogue record, and I hold that with um, Kristen Rhodes. 
so again that was um one of the other records that they they kindly put on for women a couple of years ago three years ago maybe three years it's, it's wild four years yeah. maybe <laughs> Andrew doesn't know Andrew's rubbish I don't know why I ask Andrew or anything but she doesn't know so that's if you need to ask Andrew anything maybe try somebody else first so <laughs> um and um yeah that was that was good and I wanted to do that so I've got the dumbbell and um, they don't do them here so I got this sent over here for me to practice uh with so I'd be able to do it so if that ever came around again Andrew and I have discussed it that that's something that we would both have an interest in that particular record and it's a shame well maybe not it's a shame that it's not this time because we're both in the pro show so we wouldn't have been able to do uh all of those all of them <laughs> and, and the circus dumbbell record as well because yeah. that's heavy that's heavy so it's a lot <laughs> yeah um but um, yeah we have we'd have an interest in both having a go at that if, if anybody from rogue heard that then we would do that <laughs> <laughs> okay that'd be cool um mm -hmm. so where were we um Oh, my mind's gone blank. Oh, aye. So, yous are, yes, yes. You are both doing the Arnold's End now in March. So, um, talk me through the events on that and how you have been preparing for it. Ooh. Can you hear me? Oh, I missed that bit. You froze halfway through that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying about the Arnold's. Talk me through the events and how you are preparing for it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, I'm glad you're laughing because <laughs> what have we got? Well, we've got um... so this is where we're both like, what are we doing again? So we've we've already established <laughs> we've got um we've got a Viking press, Viking yeah. press, um Max... wheelbarrows. Oh, the wheelbarrows. Yeah, there's three Max wheelbarrows. Hummer. Yeah, twelve Max inch is... tire deadlift. Max Hammer wheel, twelve inch deadlift. deadlift. That's it. Yeah. Um, yoke Fun medley. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we know what we're doing, really. We're doing, yeah. yeah. Um, so there's a, so the wheelbarrows are a medley. So it's three wheelbarrows. The yokes are three yokes as well, and that ends on three hundred and sixty-three kilos Whoa. because that's what we need in our lives. And wasn't it, um, it was three oh six even at OSG, isn't it? That's the biggest yoke there was to mm -hmm. date, as far as I know. So. Um, I mean, it's, it's only for six meters, so yeah. what are you complaining about? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, max sandbag toss over four meters. So that's pretty high, <laughs> too. And everybody has to take every weight on that event. So that's what I've noticed in the rules about that one. And uh, a max at the stone. So they're actually, the records are basically the rogue records that they're doing on the Sunday are kind of similar to what we're prepping for as well so it's a, a strange way that that worked out however and obviously you're <laughs> both going to win it <laughs> <coughs> what the records or the competition now the competition and the records if you <laughs> the competition wow. i it's it's a, another really good mix of people andrea isn't it mm. it's really because we our invitations have been standing for since before covid um so we've had a long time but even then I think Andrew and I were discussing that we weren't even sure if this would go ahead because of travel but mm -hmm. we're obviously really happy happy to go um I'm happy to go I'm thinking you are as well aren't you yeah we're no I love the Arnold yeah. and the Arnold's is one of my favorite competitions yeah um you know I love the I just love the whole atmosphere the whole city yeah. is just like buzzing for the Arnold um you know everyone is just there to do something at the Arnold, um, you know, the arena itself, just the whole, the way that they've even progressed the women, obviously now that we're at, at the yeah. pro stage, yeah. um, the way that they've progressed us women to kind of have the platform that the men have got as well. It's really exciting. Um, and you also get to see, almost you always get to put yourself back in an amateur position, watching them, you know, you can kind of sit back, sit back and watch them. Um, but I do just love the whole weekend, and I love going to America mm -hmm. anyway. America's like my second home now, so I love um, just getting on a plane and seeing the American people. Mm -hmm. I feel the, I feel the same same way about it as well. That it's nice that we've got a really good uh, platform there. Um, it's quite an intense competition. It's um, really time restricted as well, so mm -hmm. not as time restricted as, as I was, <laughs> however. But it's still um, time restricted in. Like what's going on at what time because we'd be on a stage but something would have been before us and something will be coming after so everybody's got to be done 
you know, in that specific time. So it's like holding all of your like life together in that specific quite pressurized time frame as well as still being as competitive as possible. So we've got quite a lot going on. And like Andrea said, there's so much stuff to see and do and buy. <laughs> so yeah. To go with an it. empty suitcase and come back with yeah. a full one. <laughs> yeah, for all stuff that we can't get here, or if we could get it mm. here, it costs a lot to get it shipped, you know. So yeah. um it's just a great experience and to meet other people, catch up with other people, it's a great opportunity. So we're grabbing that with both hands and we hope to put on a good performance. How mm. long are you both going over for? Uh five days I'll be there for. Yeah probably going to go on Wednesday yeah come home Monday something like that probably. yeah leave, leave, leave Monday mm. over, or do you fly yourselves over <clears throat> the same as Woosh, didn't they they put you up on accommodation and flew you over or am I am I am yeah. I being fed fibs <laughs> no no you you're correct about that that bit for them yeah, um, <laughs> and, um, yeah so I suppose a little bit around this time it's a bit more a bit more support than there there has been so mm-hmm. yeah it's uh that's never happened before either so to be tactical. Honest, I was like I'm gonna yeah. stay quiet because I don't know what to say <laughs> so yeah we, we do have a little bit of um a bit of support that way um yeah so there we go uh, it's really good though that the women are starting to get um the support that you know that that's needed for the men of I know like men of have the support for years they've built up their own and uh, you know their own platforms and stuff for different kind of sponsors and that mm-hmm. I, I like i know it's not the end of the world if you don't get paid for doing you know your your sport because you just love it you know that's not the that's not the end game but i mean it would certainly help <laughs> at the same time if you were getting paid as a full-time athlete like most other athletes are like crossfitters and like there's swimmers, there's footballers, you know, it, w- it would be it would be pretty nice even for the women to be recognised for all the hard work you've put into it as well. I definitely agree. And I think as you get to, you know, the the time that, that Donna and I have been in the sport, we kind of think that, we you know, we have done it all for fun. It has, and it is, still is fun. And we, you know, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun and we didn't yeah. enjoy it. But it's just nice to get that recognition now to not necessarily, even if we don't get paid, but just have our yeah. flights and accommodation mm-hmm. paid for. To have a little bit of sponsorship so we don't have to pay for our you know our, our lifting equipment or our, you know our gym clothes like the supplements it's just things that we don't have to fork out for so it's not like actually getting a payment as such all the time yeah. it's just having that recognition um and to have the platform that the guys have got again it's it's just bonuses isn't it you know you get you kind of get recognized for all the hard work that you've done mm-hmm. um over the years and it just makes it a little bit more satisfactory i think yeah that was yeah. well well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably couldn't put it better myself. <laughs> um, and then getting back to the competition. So Donna, you had competed, wasn't your the one before that was the you no, yeah, you didn't yeah. do Britain strongest woman, didn't you? Not this year, both of you didn't. No. And no. your last one then, Donna, was UK's where what you won in Bangor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um yeah, how did you, obviously it went great. You won it. <laughs> how did yeah, you find it? it? And you know, how did you find it in the day? You know, it was being outside. It was a bit wet, rainy. Um, you know, the weather wasn't really on anybody's side. Like <laughs> no, and well, when, like it's always like a running joke that like literally whenever I go outside to compete, it just rains all the time. <laughs> so um, I kind of expected that it would be. And if you ever have to pull a number out of a hat, I always pick number one. That's just the way that it is. I may as well just not pick anymore because we should know. <laughs> It's going to rain and you've got to go first. So it's um, it was another like interesting day. It was long. It was it was not warm in Bangor and it's mm-hmm. right beside the sea. Yeah. So it was um, <laughs> Andrea's worst nightmare and <laughs> yeah. um, coming close to one of mine as well. To be fair, <laughs> so it's uh, it was it was tricky and again it was quite time time restricted as well. We had a lot to get through. But the events were again visually, visually really good. So that's a nice thing. Um, again, it was more, it was quite a tactical competition for me. I was used my my brain, which is not always the case. So um, it was some some of it was hard work. Other other bits of it were were good fun, and I had a nice time um, in my leotard. Um, so <laughs> that's all. Right. They were very flattering. <laughs> Well, I, I quite liked mine, if I was honest. I was like, oh, my God, this is just going to be the worst thing ever. Like, 
no, there's some people do not need to be seen in a leotard. And I would be one of those people <laughs> when I got it on, I was like, felt like a superhero. So um, I did enjoy, I did enjoy the day, I enjoyed the events, uh, especially like tire flipping, truck pull, stuff like that. And it's nice to have, apart from Andrea didn't come, but the rest of people from Britain all, uh, all there as well. Yeah. So like I say, I, d- I did enjoy that. And the events were pretty, pretty cool. The tire um, flip was quite fun was it Lucy yeah. and for a while and then you just you just had this outburst <laughs> and you just went you just went flying then <laughs> well I sent it to Jenny and she was like oh, slow I was like <laughs> <laughs> but I, when I've watched it back obviously I can see what she was talking about but um like it should have been going like that at the start not just like the last two flips <laughs> at the end but um it was good the funny deadlifty platform thing wasn't much to my liking but um, again, we all did. Like that. <laughs> no, we did the best with what with yeah. what we could. Um, the tug of war. That was a funny one. That wasn't meant to be a tug of war, though, wasn't it? That it was meant to be something. No, else. it was supposed to be like a um, like a pole push where you like push each other. I know Andrew's like <laughs> laughing because I'd be like, "What even is this?" On the phone <laughs> to her, um, and we'd we'd got one made as well so that we could uh, practice. And then when we got there, it was like a tug of war. And the problem with that kind of event, it's really like weight related so the mm. poor little person that I had like on my first round I think you had me you know, in one of your rounds as well yeah I did she's so cute and gorgeous <laughs> and she just like you know she's just not gonna it's just not gonna work it's you know you kind of need to see it looks really good for the crowd and the television and stuff but like people who weigh 60 kilos and people who were like 30 kilos more and then there's people that are another 30 to 50 kilos more than me it's never gonna work out that way so I, that wasn't really a, a great event although like I suppose it's, it'll visually look well yeah what was but your end goal into it um no I was going there because I wanted to win that one yeah. so <laughs> yeah yeah cool and you you were videoing um there was video cat fo- fo- or oh my head away there was video you were being videoed as well apart yeah. from the, it being on tv as well was that for mm-hmm. the documentary that's coming yeah out? that was a little bit for that so it's a guy that um it was he approached me about a project he wanted to do that was just something a little bit uh different so we've made some like bits of footage all the way through like lockdowns and that's where i've been like outside in my garage or outside my garage like lifting and stuff so hopefully it'll all come to fruition when he's all put it together so the little trailer that's been out is just like a little snippet of that but again, it was good because you've got other people from the UK's, you know, on, you know, on that video as well. And yeah. Sue and Sam, um, they've, they're making, I think, a really big documentary. So they had their film crew there and stuff as well. Um, I think Glenn had said that the UK's would eventually be on TV. <laughs> Whether that will happen or not, I'm not really sure. But it uh, was well received again on the live stream. So Gemma was the commentator and I've known Gemma for a long time. Uh, she coached me as well. So it was nice to you know, have Gemma, Gemma there as well doing the commentating because also she's done the sport before. So like Laws is there commentating for the guys and stuff. It's nice to have, you know, a female that's been there commentating too. And Andrea, so. you were in the lineup as well for it. So you had decided not to do the competition. <laughs> was What was your... Um, behind it <laughs> controversial but just you know what I and you just don't like the rain do you just don't I like, don't like cold <laughs> I didn't like the events I just probably not going to work in my favor now but I just felt like I was told to do it right yeah now I don't like to be told what to do unless it's by laws <laughs> <laughs> um and again because there wasn't much we didn't have much notice either Right. It wasn't yeah. for it. And so my, in my mind, I was going to Wuss. That was the only comp I was doing this year. That was what I wanted to be 100% fit for. So it's all. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't quite when I got to the day, but um, I just didn't want to do it. And I, they just, that's all I kept saying. I just don't want mm-hmm. to do it. I refused to train for it. Um, you know, Loz had prepped me for it. He'd, he'd sent me a program, which looked fine, but I just didn't want to do it. I was refusing to touch any of the implements that were involved. Um, it just was being I, I think I you just were, felt like I was having a proper tantrum mm-hmm. um, and who would who would have thought that would be a thing <laughs> well I'm normally quite a relaxed person 
Um, yeah, so uh, I, just, I just didn't want to do it. And I think I was getting myself worked up about it, to be honest, and it was becoming a bit of a battle um, that I felt like I should do it because I'm one of the, you know, the British favourites and everyone's going to want to see me there and it's going to be this, and it's going to be like, you need to be there. And I was like, I've come into this sport because I want to do it, not because mm -hmm. someone's told me to do it. And I want to do things because I want to do them, yeah. not because it's expected of me. Um, and I had that with OSG in 2019. I was expected to go back because mm -hmm. I was the reigning champion of that year. It just messed me up and I didn't want to do it. And I went and I didn't enjoy it at all. And I didn't want to go through that again. No. Um, despite all the promises of it being on TV and all that sort of stuff, I just, I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> That's yeah, what you I have kept to do things for I your just... own health, like it's your own mental health, it's your own physical yeah. health too. At the end of the day, and if it's going to make you just, if, it, if you're dreading doing something, there really is no point in doing it because you'll only end up either injuring yourself or yeah. putting yourself off or like what the big, your big, big goals. You know, um, mm -hmm. yes, the small ones all count, but if they're going to put you off for what your ultimate goal is then mm -hmm. there's no point in doing it and you, yeah. you're totally right with that and just to add on to uh there what andrew you were saying that um you know picking the the competitions that you actually want to do and i think that's something that people don't see because um we don't necessarily get paid for anything that mm -hmm. we do or the stuff that we do this our living and the feeding of our children is not coming from this uh from this sport so it's not as easy. You have like little people depending on you that you can't just go right. This is what I'm going to go and I'm going to go here for a week, or I'm going to go and spend X amount of time training for this, for that. When you, although we've said about bringing you happiness and stuff, there does have to be some kind of like financial gain to it for the mm -hmm. expenditure that you have to go. So we still had to pay to go to Ireland, yeah, ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's not. Um, it's still the time taken so that's like another factor I'd like to add into Andrea's thing as well yeah that it's um you know it's our personal expense and like they say we do have um new sponsors and like stuff like that but like Andrea touched on earlier it's more of things <laughs> so it's not always having that you know money there to go out and uh pay for stuff so if you want to go and compete at the competitions that bring you the most happiness then I totally believe that's what you should do and so obviously not getting into too much on the internet at the at present time that's, yeah. something that's, been, it, that's something that's been discussed so I feel that it's important to say that um but also as well I don't know if well, I think it would just happen to Andrea as well they're like well why don't you do the the Brits ones well for Andrea and I to do the Brits ones we have to do the regional qualifiers of England then we have to do England then we have to do Brits so that's three three competitions yeah. as well as you're expected to go to OSG and do well go to the Arnold go to worse, go to the new clash system that's coming up, which is something that I want to do. So something mm -hmm. has to give somewhere. And yeah. also, like, I'm over 40. Andrew is going to be 40. You can't. <laughs> you can't. We're not talking about age on this, Michael. <laughs> you just can't, you just can't keep going. Like, you have to prioritise mm -hmm. what you want to do. And also, that with the time that you have, and also, we have, we have families and other things to do as well. Um, yeah. Like, if it was our, this was our job, you know okay then you've got other financial compensation you can maybe take your family with you but right now we have to leave everybody at home and travel across the world yeah. so it, it, yeah. it's it's different like that and, and I'm a single parent it. now as well yeah for the last 18 months um I've been kind of trying to <laughs> adjust family life being a single mum so whenever I go away now I have to then the children then go to the dads or I have to send them to grandma's for a couple of days so it's the organisation mm -hmm. and trying to keep my kids happy at the same time. Yeah. And if they're already if they're already feeling quite displaced with what was going on at home, for me to then go off, it was. I mean, it's hard enough going to Dubai for twelve days. My youngest daughter, she has like separation issues, and she she struggles when I'm away. Yeah. But mm -hmm. have that in mind. So I then I'm going away, trying to be this world superhero athlete, <laughs> knowing that I've left a crying child at home. I don't know. You know, it's really hard, it's, and it is those balances as well. And so it's it's so much involved that people don't understand, and it hates having expectations because you are who you are. You're expected to go and do all this. Like I wanted to actually, I was thinking about doing the, the qualifiers for UKs this year, mm -hmm. but to get to do the qualifiers, it's a four and a half hour drive. To me, she was like, I'm, I was like, it's in Scotland because she thinks I live in Scotland, don't you? 
you live in Scotland, it's snowing in Scotland, and I'm not in Scotland there, but you are, and I was like, I'm not even going to do this Scotland. for the 50th time ever again, <laughs> so. <laughs> where where are you, you're, you're not in Scotland then? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> um, in mean, like the north of North Yorkshire, but to Andrea, that's Scotland, so I just leave it as that. <laughs> And that's what we run with every single time I that we go through. I always thought you were from Inverness, so there you go. Yeah, but that's but that's where <laughs> much. that's where yeah, that's where I lived, and that's where I kind of started off doing this. But at the at the oh. moment, I live in I live in Yorkshire. But yeah, um, yeah, it's a long drive for you to come it's here. It's a as long well. drive, and it's you know the then you have to think about um, you know. I mean, um, is, there, is there any top two that get through to UKs? Yeah, the only the top two, and again we you have to obviously travel here under your own steam you have to pay to enter and yeah. um then you've got to go home and go and do your normal job and stuff like that so it's there is a pathway to follow and I totally understand the process of it but it can't be something has to give somewhere mm, and yeah. for Andrea that's obviously that's the way where it, where it is you know and I think too like yeah. for men like they can be a bit more selfish than women because you know they're like not to talk down dads or anything because dads are brilliant and all that you know you do need mm -hmm. your dad you do need your daddy but like they can just go off like and do their own thing and just expect the women to well look ugh, the kid wants to stay with you anyway you know I'll just go off and do this or you know I'm I'm not a mother so correct me if I'm wrong like but that's like my dad like would have took me with me to football and stuff and my mum would have just been left with me my sister to foot her about and do whatever like it was just expected of my mum and if I wasn't into football with my dad like I probably would have been sitting at home with my mum as well you know so it's 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 a lot different for for women than it is for men yeah there is still that imbalance isn't there of um <clears throat> the roles within the household um despite us being perhaps the most alpha male part of the most relationships in there as being strong women there is still that um sort of segmentation segregation probably mm -hmm. it's right. changing think, because of all uh, strong women you know <laughs> it, i think that it, it does but it's also just like the difference in um like the way that it is at the other levels for the guys in strong women and the women in strong women at the level that Andrea and I would want to come to compete at. So it's still having to um, go to the like qualifiers in your own country, regardless of whatever mm. that you've done before. So I think that can sometimes be a bit of a be a bit of a difficulty um, when you've got lots of other responsibilities and lots of other things. Like Andrea says, the expectation of what you're going to do at the big competitions you can't do if you've done five small competitions mm. yeah and there was three, quite a lot of competitions three weeks on. before yeah. yeah there's quite a lot of competitions on in 21 too because all the ones from 2020 and and that had been postponed so like it was literally there was um i think at one stage was it 10 weeks of like six competitions at one stage wasn't there so it was like nearly a competition every week <laughs> it was all, all of a sudden like the world yeah. of competing just opened and everyone was just like wow well, just everywhere and competing and getting injured and <laughs> yeah it's crazy i think from for which i don't like to do but from uk's to wuss i think it was a matter of like three weeks it, it wasn't even it wasn't even a whole month and that's something that i generally i generally wouldn't do yeah no, so no, and I've, I've never done since <laughs> all before <laughs> And like even for you to compete in Britain's strongest woman, you were going like from the West to Britain's. I know you didn't compete. I know both of you didn't compete, but even for that, like that's just mental. And I don't know where Annabelle found the energy. Where she got that even... from? I was like, wow, yeah. <laughs> I mean, absolutely crazy. But she's woman. young. Do you know what I mean? She's really young. She's got the recovery ability to do that. I I wouldn't be doing. I mean, I the jet lag alone would kill me off. <laughs> at home let alone go competing and it was a really tight competition as well wasn't it, it? Was. it wasn't like it was easy for her she really had to try so for her to come out on top you know two days running yeah you know, mm -hmm. you know sort of within days of each other is absolutely incredible it really really was and I, I went to cheer for her so <laughs> and I was like I'm here <laughs> but it's uh, and she did really really well you know so good for good for Annabelle it's something that like my body like Andrea's it would just be like nah crazy old lady don't do that <laughs> how long would it take you to recover after a big competition um I think physically and mentally are very different so physically I could be back in the gym in about a week I tend to just not go to the gym specifically just 
to get my life back in order, to get work back on track, to get my kids back in and to get them back into a routine. Um, but mentally it can be about a month before I'm ready to really focus on anything again. I think there is um, the major come down from a major competition is pretty hard. It's, it's got easier over the years. The first time it really happened to me, I thought it was like a manic depressive. I didn't know what was going on. Um, but the, the come down can be quite hard for about a month, I think, before I can really focus on anything again. Yeah, definitely. And I think if you see posts of other people that are starting to like experience like post comp blues, it's just like the adrenaline's just left and everything that you've been building up for was done in the space of say like worse than an hour and a half and um like say OSG is two days the Arnold's going to be two days but yet you still like Andrea said you've got to fly home you've got to get home sort out your whole household um you know make sure the house doesn't burn down while they're being away leaving everybody else in charge but you know it, there's, a, there's a lot to it to get back on track for normal life again I think yeah and for OSG, is that one of the reasons like you, you didn't compete this year just because of all the competitions? And obviously you had injury, you had an injury and you're focusing now on Arnold, but would that have been one of the reasons for um, not competing at that? <clears throat> um, that was a little uh, deeper. Um, <laughs> you don't have to go, you like, don't have to like, talk I'm about it. I'm not compete ever, anywhere again, am I? <laughs> <laughs> the competition I, I didn't really want to do and I think um the, the, the events would have been quite good for me I was, the events were almost on par to, to um what's really I, you know I would know I would have been good at them but it was the the treatment that we got from us so we got sent over to to Dubai I mean I had a holiday out of it Donna you were there just a few days less than I was mm -hmm. we got um prize money regardless of the position that we came in our hotel and all our food was paid for. We got shipped around all across Dubai. We had private drivers. Um, you know, they couldn't do enough for us. Yeah. So for then, for me to go to OSG to then pay out three thousand pounds to get there, oh. I would have to come first to win to get that three thousand pound back, yeah. and that was over three days. Oh, so yeah, to do so everything I did in Dubai in an hour and a half or do it all again for three days and still pay £3,000. It yeah, just, well, like Donna was saying, anyone, it's just not financially viable for me anymore. Um, I was almost told that I was ungrateful because the price part had gone up. So there's $3,000, I think it, was, it wasn't even in pounds, was it? It was $3,000 yeah. for the winner, 2000 for second and 1000 for first. So, you know, there was like, oh, we've got a $6,000 prize pot. I thought that with this increase, it would entice you. I was like, it's not, that's not the point. It's not the point about that. I'm telling you what the reason why I don't want to do it. Yeah. And it was like, well, hopefully you'll decide otherwise. I'm like, well, no, not. And then I think it just kind of snowballed. I think the few of us were just like, well, if that person's not competing, then I'm not going to compete. And then before you know it, none of the actual previous podium people were there. <laughs> Um, I wanted, I did want to go, but I want to compete in the in the next weight class down, and there's literally no chance <laughs> that I was going to get to 82 kilos without doing something pretty drastic by then. And I just didn't really think that I was in the right place to give a good performance um, at the OSG, which whatever way I decided. And also, for me, travel was still quite uncertain, um, and with working in the NHS, having to try and take the holidays as well. Um, for something that I might not be able to go to, but I would have still had to have that time off work. I wouldn't have been able to give my holiday back. So and you would have had the uh, isolated too for what two, 10 to 12 days uh, um, after as no, well, or was that different for you, Cakes? I think that just stopped it, it when changed you were back. by that time. Yeah, but again, we didn't know that that was going to change. Mm -hmm. So that's like a big, you know, a bit a big gamble for that to to pay off, which is why they moved the worst from America to Dubai because it's. British people could go to Dubai yeah. whereas the America was still they wouldn't let us go so that was another thing it's a big commitment to go and train for something that you think well I'm actually might not be able to go because of the government as well um so just with that in mind we've been quite goal orientated like Andrew and I have spoken about before I didn't really think that I would be in the best place to give a good performance for something that I might not be able to go to and I didn't want to take that amount of time off of work for something that might not actually happen in the same technical financial year as 
the Arnold, which is a bit further in the future that we might be able to go to, which has turned out that it's possible. So again, that's what we're talking about is picking and choosing what's something that you actually want, want to do, whether the expectation of people that you should or shouldn't be there. So that's mm. the way that it is. Yeah. Okay. Are you okay for time? Because I'm just realising it's 20 past nine. Um, he's okay. I'm okay. I've still yeah, got yeah. a few wee questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can always have a part two, like if we run out of time. But um, so just getting away then from the competitions, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. Just just because I'm pure curious, have you ever googled yourself? <laughs> have you ever googled yourself just to see what it says about you? <laughs> I I have yeah. Um, I've gone from page two to page one now, which is really good. <laughs> um, but only because my children do a lot of research. There's often things that come up at school. Um, and then, oh, yeah, we Googled you today. So it just was out of curiosity um, as to what Google said. Um, but yeah, there's some of the horrendous pictures. I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> pictures are there forever now. They're never going away. From like early days when I was massively huge and just got roped into the whole media thing <laughs> did, you, did you find anything out about yourself that you didn't know <laughs> um my age was often uh, wrong which was never an issue because I always made me younger um <laughs> oh, I think they've mistaken my coach at the time for my husband um so that became a little bit of a running joke <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no nothing really untoward no, I haven't. I haven't really looked at all, to be honest. It's um, not something that I thought of doing. I think my kids have done it, but mine are old. my kids are a bit older than Andrea, so if they read stuff, that they're old enough to kind of deal with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I suppose like Andrea used to watch like YouTube or stuff like that. You know, people have uploaded videos and like YouTube and stuff. Um, some of the comments aren't very good, so mm. after a while, I don't ever look at that anymore. And that's just more like a, a self care kind of thing. Yeah. 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 self-care is very important <laughs> yeah it is in this definitely sport, yeah. um do you ever suffer with imposter syndrome i spoke to lucy and lucy would talk about it openly and she was saying with her deadlift she kind of suffered for, with a wee bit of that afterwards so i was always curious saying you know does the two world's strongest women <laughs> ever suffer with that um i all the time i get really bad anxiety all the time when i compete and um I think, it, I, I mean, I know that I'm there for a reason. I know that I'm one of the best in the world and that's the whole reason why I'm about to go on the stage. But then in my other little the little voice in my head is going, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Um, yeah, it can be, it can come and go. Um, it's not so obviously bad nowadays, but obviously back in the early days, it was very much like, you have no idea what you're doing. There are people out there that are better than you. Um, even now I still think that I'm not as good as I think I am. I, I'm not as good as I am. If that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, despite having world records and winning lots of things. So yeah, just a bit of a mental thing, I think. Um, I suppose I'd be like Andrea at the at the, at the start, definitely, definitely felt like that. Um but it's just dealing with things like differently. I think also as you get older, you you become like different. <laughs> I can't really explain it. It's uh, like, I always say it's like my old lady hormones are taking over. It's like a <laughs> kind of like a, like a little bit of a different perspective, I suppose. Um, so any kind of, I do have anxiety. I'm nervous at competing and things, but it's like harnessing that and channeling it somewhere else. So that's just some, a skill that I have learned just in general life, I think, just to be able to deal with all the things that I had to deal with, basically, over <laughs> such a long period of time, not just in sport, but, like, just in general. So um, I don't know if that's, like, really answering the question, but that's how it is for me. And you were talking about self-care. What do you both do for a bit of you time, self-care, and, and that? Um... I'm a key, I like gardening and I like to read um, and I like my own, in this last 18 months I've realised I love to have my own company, um, I like to just not be around people so when I've been competing I've been training with lots of people, you won't hear from me for, <laughs> for a couple of months. Um, so just okay, is Andrea alive? I don't know, I'll just mess yeah. you. Yeah, I <laughs> my am family alive. are all oh. the same. 
just checking <laughs> to make sure you're still there. I'm like, yeah, I'm still there. Why haven't you called me? I just don't want to speak to anyone. Um, but I also like to get my eyelashes done. You know, I get my eyebrows, just like to my face to look pretty and um, just filling out really. And I just the social media stuff, like Donna said, you kind of have to learn to not look at it anymore. And when I've got a competition coming up, I tend to mute a lot of my, all of my competitors' pages. So I don't get um, surprised by anything. Nothing pops up and starts freaking me out. It's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's that's my main self care is when I'm competing. I don't. Yeah. I just come off social media. I put my stuff on there, training videos of what I'm doing, and then I come off of it again. Yeah, um, mine's a little bit the same. I don't really read any of the comments on other other platforms, um, YouTube, Rogue stuff like that. It's um, it's some of it can be quite disheartening. Although you know that these people aren't anything to you, it still can be a bit of a negative impact if you read what people decided to take the time to write. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh obviously like you can say as much as you want it's a reflection on them and they're who they are as people but as much as even if you push it to one side if you spend time dwelling about what people said in a negative way then you could start to think that way so generally don't spend any time doing that anymore at all um and I'm like Andrew <laughs> I like to have all my eyelashes uh put on so that's my my self-care of like an hour and a half just lying there with my eyes shut <laughs> just sit. let someone take over for a little yeah. while <laughs> but um I've got dogs and I like to sit with my dogs and like my children are older so they can you know you can have like a good conversation with uh with them and I'm an only child so I'm used to like being by myself as well so it's um just kind of like managing every kind of situation really so it's kind of like a juggling whatever thing that I think that I need at the time that's what I do with the exception of my eyelashes that I have a constant constant battle <laughs> um so recovery we haven't talked really much about recovery um is there any particular like recovery regime that you have um mine's not as good as it should be I tend to focus more on recovery um when I'm prepping for a competition um or if something's just really aching or hurting then I'll see somebody about it but otherwise my recovery tends to be just eating and hydration stretching rolling if I'm at home um when I've when I've got a competition I do get massage and acupuncture and um all sorts of therapy going on in the lead up to it but I'm a bit rubbish at that sort of stuff to be honest <laughs> when I tell all my clients that they have to focus on recovery and I don't do it myself <laughs> um I do like active recovery stuff that's all programmed for me you know stretching and rolling and things and it's like written down so that I'll definitely do that and I have to tick all the boxes with that um a bit the same with Andrew like that I'll go and get seen if um there's something there's something wrong but again, that can be quite restrictive with um, time and finance as well. So it's yeah. not like a, a, a cheap thing to get done either. So it's mainly looking after myself and training smart. And like Andrea said, you know, good quality nutrition and hydration are the main the main things I would like focus on. So to try and prevent injuries and I haven't had anything that's ever really gone wrong yet. Yeah, and does crossed. any of your gyms have like access to saunas or the cryo spas or the what do you call them? Wee boots, massage and boots, I call them. There's an actual um, if, if I went to Spartan, they've got like an infrared sword, sauna, but that's like I say, it's quite a, a long way away. So yeah. usually, I'd need to be to come to come home. So there's nothing necessarily like in my local area that could you know I could go and do that. I'd maybe go and sit in a swimming pool sauna or something. But again, it's like. Like time is <laughs> yeah. it's time as well it's like you know if you've got the time to go and sit in a sauna you probably should be at the gym that's how yeah. I see it sometimes it's like if I whatever spare time I have I'm either working at the gym or seeing to my children um so I guess having the extra half an hour to, to be in the sauna maybe <laughs> should be included <laughs> yeah but actually we're like looking after everybody instead <laughs> yeah yeah it's tough and the mm -hmm. money as well. We've just had a new um, a new um, centre open up just locally to us. It's got a, a full walk-in cryo chamber. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried that. And I mean, it was okay. It was only in there for three minutes, but I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> because, but you can just push the door open. But being in a freezer, which was like <laughs> minus 50 degrees for three minutes, mm -hmm. 
I didn't get much benefit from it and it was just really expensive and I was like I couldn't I can't do that every week it's really good therapy from recovery but I can't do that as much as like the research says would be beneficial for you um but they have the boots and stuff like that both of you don't live anywhere near like beaches or anything <laughs> i knew that was maybe something that you uh, said i you'd have a say. beach at my front door that's why i yeah. asked <laughs> and um the same as when i went to go and say uh with luke you know he's right beside like all the locks and the sea essentially yeah, as well i think i've seen um, you down um in a youtube video doing um one of the ice beach challenges things that he done one time in the past that's a few years ago um, like. he he does all the stuff he does all the stuff like that but um there's not really necessarily anywhere that's right near, near me I don't want to be in our local river <laughs> doing, <laughs> do, doing that um so no and I know that um people speak really highly of their mental health benefits and stuff of it but um I just don't really have access to a, a lake or the sea on my doorstep sadly and I, Andrew doesn't live anywhere near anything like that do you I'm surrounded by water I'm not around the oh, yeah? coast yeah Oh, country bumpkin, I am. How are you? Well, yeah, right on the sticking the out there, <laughs> yeah, surrounded by water. And your nutrition, then, so yous would be like what would what calories would yous be on macros and stuff like yous must be on some amount to keep your energy up to be able to do all the weird and wonderful <laughs> things you do. <laughs> it's do you know what's really funny is that people assume that, that I'm on like ridiculous amounts of food to train with. Um, at the moment, I'm on 2,400 calories, um, which has actually gone up. It was only about 2,200 a few, about a couple of months ago. When I'm in full prep, it might only be about 3,000. Mm -hmm. Physically, I can't eat a great deal more than that. It just it pains me to eat more than my stomach can handle. And you almost start force feeding it to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that feeling. Um, so I eat stuff that's kind of... I like to snack, so I have lots of food all the time. Um, but yeah, it's not crazy amounts of food that people think I eat, like 10,000 calories a day. I'm like, no, I'm not yeah, a 170 good. kilo man that can do <laughs> that. That's that's those crazy people. And you're working along with, is it Terry Holland's at the minute as well, with, a, with the nutrition plan? Is that, um, am I right in that? <laughs> I, currently, yes. I'm going to be going back to Ellis um, Vine next week actually um again I'm so fussy with food and I just I love my food but if I find if now that I've been programmed for a little while if I don't have a program that suits my lifestyle I'll just go off and eat all the stuff mm -hmm. um and it just messes me up so uh, although Terry's program was great for me to start off with it just doesn't fit my lifestyle um there's a lot of stuff that I need to prepare all the time and I just don't have time to prepare all the time I like to have a lunchbox where I can just tuck things in and go yeah um you know and I'm, I'm busy so I don't have time to be prepping food six times a day uh so I'll be back with Ellis and Ellis actually got me through uh last year so I'd lost quite a lot of weight and I maintained quite a lot of muscle mass through the competition I was at my lightest that I'd ever competed at as well so I was really pleased with that I think I had abs the day I, I competed so which I was pretty pleased with um so yeah I'll be going back to Ellis next week sure. uh, mine's again the same as like Andrea said there it's not very I don't really have that many calories mine's only at like one seven something um at the at the moment and it goes on the undulating kind of system if I'm training or if I'm having a, having a rest day um and I might, I might have laughed at Andrea being fussy but like I'm terrible being well, that's just really fussy <laughs> yeah um, I don't really do very well at all and it's it's trying to get the amount of protein in in for me in the actual edible format it it's very very difficult um it's only really protein shakes you can take two um <laughs> yeah but there's only and there's only that like, I only really like turkey mints if I'm being honest <laughs> and um, <laughs> And a steak if someone else will cook it for me because I'm really rubbish. But again, it's not something that you can take to your NHS shift as a like a box of steak. It just no. takes rotten if it's been sitting in a box. And you need Plus to make they always look at you... you whenever you come on my steak. I came on my fish one time and they, they actually put me out of the office. <laughs> oh, okay. But it's so I just need to have something that's able to, like Andrea said, like mass produce that you can just take out of the fridge and put in a box. You know how much it's supposed to to weigh it out and kind of off you go so it needs to be something that's simple and because I can't cook 
at, at all. <laughs> it uh, <laughs> just needs to be something that's also for a simple person. So it's um, difficult. Like when we were away at Worst, like Andrew would be like, "What? What is that?" And I'd be like, "I just can't do it. I just can't eat any of the any of the the things. I just can't." So it's a. Uh, I'm a bit of a tricky customer when it comes to when it comes to stuff like that. But again, like Andrea competed at the lightest that I've been, and I'm going to compete in the weight, the weight class that's been introduced later in the year as well instead of being open weight which is be, be better for me is what I'm hoping the under really three didn't you say are you at uh, that now is that no 90, is it 190 yeah there's 90 yeah oh yes that's right yeah the under 90s I forgot that mm-hmm. that's a new that is a new it, category isn't it yeah 82 is probably like a bit of a stretch for me to get to as much as I would have really really liked to do it it's like I got to about 88 and I was happy with that but it's difficult to maintain that if you're going to be competing against mm. people who are you know quite a lot heavier and um so what made you decide to go down to the the under 90s um just because I think that's where I sit better like that's yeah. naturally where where I sit and also as well with the people that are other people that are coming into the sport the people weigh um and I mean it all in like a, in a nice way people weigh so much more mm-hmm. so if you're within your, your weight class, you're competing against people who are a similar body weight to you. Whereas after 82, it's just open. So if I weigh 90 and then I'm competing with someone who's like potentially 120, 130 yeah. and more kilograms, that's that's a lot of difference in particular events. And it does definitely, it does definitely cross over. So there's definitely scope now with more women in the sport to have another another weight category. So I'm hoping that um that OSG will pick up on that as well like the strength clash collective I don't know the rest of their name but that's what they're doing later in the year um (laughs) I'm near I'm I think I'm nearly through all these questions there's a couple more here um yeah not sure I'm nearly through them all so what do what are your goals then for 2022 I think we're probably probably repeating ourselves a wee bit here like but um I know you have said what you're you know the Arnolds now but is there any other competitions apart from UK's and that that you are um aiming for and work, like world records and stuff um so I'm gonna go um back to Britain's again well I plan to I've got to do the qualifiers first so <laughs> I'll have to go through the regional um of the Midlands or Southerns first then England's and then on to Britain's um uh obviously Arnold's coming up, maybe UK's. It's, it's, I mean, if I'm if I can't be bothered to go to um, Hartlepool, even if it is to see Donna, I just it's not going to be a big issue. Um, and I'm thinking about retiring at the end of the year. To be honest, I think. Oh, and I was, you know, I've been saying that for yes. two years. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm quite getting to the point now where I can't find the. The drive that I had two or three years ago whether that's because my personal circumstances have changed I don't know and things are kind of like a little bit easier for my head to deal with now so I don't have to sort of build it all up but I do feel like I'm in a better place than where I was a few years ago so I, I don't know if I want to continue breaking my body yeah. um to do I mean I love the sport and I will still continue training for it and obviously the coaching is now kicking off so I'll still be about I just don't know whether I'll still be competing at the level that I I am yeah, unless someone can really touch me <laughs> start commentating and all as well you'll not oh, be God. I go off on a tangent <laughs> I lose on these I don't know board. anyone's names I'm so <laughs> much remembering people's names I'm like that one over there <laughs> yeah that's my plan uh, for me it will be uh, the Arnold but that's as well because we've been waiting for it for so long so I'm looking forward to the Arnold um potentially trying to talk Andrea into a record as well um pick a pick a record maybe for the day after the Arnold but we'll see um UK's and the new weight class new weight class uh, competition that's at the end of August I think and that's in um America and I think I'm doing a stone, it's not a, a world record or anything, but it's a bit more of an exhibition with mm-hmm. uh, Rebecca Roberts at one of the um, guys competitions. So that'll be something, again, as a good platform for the sport. It's not really like a thing to win or whatever, but it's a nice showcase really, isn't it? So 
anything to promote the sport more for the people that are going to be coming after Andrea and I. But that's if OSG bring in another category for later in the yeah, later in the year, the 91s or 90, then I would probably look at doing that. But as an open weight class, I'm not necessarily sure that that's I'm um, an open weight in that in the world class that <laughs> at OSG. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> so hopefully they'll bring out another weight class. They introduced 73. Hopefully they'll bring in another one to bridge the gap between 80 and yeah. the other ladies. Yeah. And I have no interest in dropping down a weight category. I think I'd have to cut off my butt cheeks <laughs> yeah. to get down to the next category. That's yeah. not going to happen. Um, last question. Well, last of the... I'm going to do a fire questions as well with you. I didn't tell you no. something like that at the Quick start. Thinking. I, I kept that one in, in my back pocket there. You're probably going to wish that you hadn't, you hadn't done that with me and Andrew. It would just be like blankly staring at you. Um, <laughs> but um, if you were... Um, if you were to give your own selves advice knowing what you know now what would you say to yourselves start earlier <laughs> yeah don't leave it so you know don't leave it so long to get involved in something um yeah that's not going to be it's not going to be a quick answer I'm afraid but yeah <laughs> definitely start if do this journey start earlier yeah um mine mine probably be a bit similar I wish I started off or found the confidence to do something um sooner so I suppose it would be make a start if you're thinking about doing something anything just make a start and mm. um then if you're going to do strong woman then the next thing after that is to be patient, <laughs> be patient. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I know there's a, like most sports you just ex- you expect yourself to be actually no actually all sports you kind of have to start at the, the bottom and work yeah. your way up you can't just expect mm-hmm. yourself to just jump into something and be world class already and well, well that's what things are going like just <laughs> recently there's a lot of people coming in and i think they've seen that this sport is taking off and they're instantly expecting to be fantastic at it whereas i think some people will come into the sport and be naturally good mm-hmm. but they don't realize that it's, it's going to take time experience and hard work to get mm-hmm. to the level that Donna and I have got to. It's not been an easy ride at all. And they, I think they see that the, what we've got now is like, I want to do that. Great to have that goal. Yeah. But you you don't understand the sacrifices that you've got to do to get there. Yeah, and everyone has their own sacrifices too. It's all their yeah. own personal mm-hmm. journey as well. And the only competition you really have at the end of the day is yourself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is there anything else you want to talk about before I go into these fire questions? Oh, I sorry. Oh, I think I'm going to get all up. <laughs> He was already. No. <laughs> no, we're, we're ready. Like, we're. <laughs> right. myself. So, favorite TV program? <laughs> Look at us. <laughs> oh, I, don't, I don't really watch TV. <laughs> uh, I love Call the Midwife. I love that at the moment. Oh, um, mine would be anything with like dogs in it. Um, like the rescuing of the dogs. That would be the things that I like watching the most. <laughs> with, your, with your scouser boy, what do you call him? Uh... Uh, Paul O'Grady and there's yes. another one as well they're like match, matching dogs up to people oh, yeah <laughs> your favourite film um, I've got two yeah, you, <laughs> you can say them yeah go ahead um, I like uh, Gangster's Paradise and it's an old one Dirty Dancing oh yeah and, okay. and Top Gun I could probably, I've probably got quite a few <laughs> to be fair but th- oh. those ones <laughs> do you know I love The Little Mermaid mm. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. And like, um, musicals, The Greatest Showman, like totally yeah, into that. So I would, Greece. I would sing a lot. Of I musicals. love Greece. Mm. Mamma Mia. So we can't. There we go. I told you it's not going to work out for you doing this with me and Andrea. <laughs> yeah. uh, your favorite band or singer? <sighs> my favorite singer is Michael Jackson. Again, I'm going to be like really difficult. I don't really. I just like '90s cheesy dance music. I, I love it all. Like take you back to the youth club yeah anything like that <laughs> your, favorite... From a musical. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> your uh favorite drink alcoholic or non-alcoholic gin <laughs> uh to be fair I, my life will probably end without pepsi max i think so i'm just gonna have to take that <laughs> uh tea or coffee tea coffee <laughs> your favorite holiday destination dubai <laughs> um I like oh, it's terrible I like a bit of Spain land a bit of Spain mm-hmm. um so oh if you had a bucket list 
what would the top three things be on it? Oh, God. Um, I want to go skiing. As much as I hate the cold, I'd like to try (laughs) skiing. Um, Yeah, and I want to I want to swim with dolphins. And I just want to be very rich. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, God. (laughs) Um, I don't even know. I have not even thought about it. I would like to have my own business. There we go. Mm. That's one. And um, not work for the NHS anymore. And um, I don't raise, know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really know what else. I had never really thought about it. But those are, that's the thing that I would like. They're right very now. sensible answers, Donna. <laughs> yeah. I, w- I would like to have my own business and work for myself. Is what yeah. I would like. Just want to go on holiday. <laughs> Oh, well, that too. And then, but you see, then <laughs> going to all these things, be like, yeah, I want to do that and we'll be here a while. So, <laughs> um, are you an early bird or a night owl? Early bird. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, if your favorite superhero, um, I don't know. I don't actually know any superheroes. <laughs> Me, I am my own superhero. There we go. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Love it. Um, oh, Andrea is my superhero. There we go. I don't know oh. because I don't know any, <laughs> any particularly. I know. Uh, your favourite fancy dress if you were to dress up right now? Um, do you know, I've actually dressed up before as um, Corona Deville. Mm-hmm. It was the best outfit I think I've ever worn in my life. <laughs> like so much makeup on, it hurt just to touch my face and so much makeup on. Um, the, is it Maleficent with the horns? Like my friend's got, I don't know how oh, she's yeah. got this as an outfit. And I put it on in a house and I was like, yeah, this, I like this. This is cool. This is you. <laughs> I like the head thing. <laughs> oh, your favourite gym day? Oh. At the moment it's deadlift. It changes. <laughs> Depends on your mood. Yeah. Mine would change between like press and then events. Doing like doing the strong things is probably my favorite thing to do. The actual stuff that we do. The next one's favorite event. <laughs> mm. uh, <laughs> again, it varies. Um, I think anything like farmers sort of carrying, farmers frame carry, sort of picking up and moving with it. I don't like. I can't carry anything in front of me or picking up anything in front of me can hold it in my hands um I like obviously at the stones and I love the natural stone lifting that they do at the Highland Games and like mm-hmm. the hard blast stones and stuff like that um just like getting dirty in the field with the the boulders basically your if it didn't fa- rain <laughs> <laughs> your favorite city New York um I really like crack on uh, favorite other sport? Um, I like rounders. Is that a sport? I will say cricket. So I suppose. <laughs> okay, I really like rounders. It's a sport. Um, yeah. I like I like watching. Well, I've got a few. <laughs> I like watching women's rugby and women's crossfit. Actually, mm-hmm. actually, I like ath- athlet- athletics. Athletics. Mm. I was I was very much into athletics when I was younger. Yeah. And I, I like watching swimming as well and diving. Yeah. Red Bull cliff diving. If I was brave Ooh. enough, that's what that's what I would like to be on my bucket list. But yeah, soon as I, I cannot list? now dive <laughs> off a diving board, now I've got old. <laughs> it's not, probably not something for me, but I watch it on my Instagram feed a lot. So that's something that I would watch just like relax is like cliff diving. Cool. Um, your best performance... <laughs> Oh. Um, in competition uh, well it doesn't have to be strong karaoke, woman. Yeah. Can be I was going to say karaoke is definitely my best performance <laughs> it can be anything at all definitely. I, I'm going to say karaoke um, and that yeah. was about a few years ago we were in a local pub um, we kind of gate crashed this old man's pub and they had a karaoke and we were, it was coming on to Halloween so I was dressed up as a dark angel very tiny little skirt like a corset and wings and hair and stuff Wow. I sung um, <laughs> Bump and Grind to all the old men in the pub. <laughs> the old men were loving it, I'm sure. It was great. I was on stage and everything. Oh, Andrea. <laughs> I would love to have seen that. <laughs> oh, 
Focus. Uh, my, my best performance, according to my next door neighbour, was last weekend <laughs> uh, when uh, my son and I were singing uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Light in the Garden. <laughs> so she was <laughs> she was quite impressed, to be fair. <laughs> oh, I would love to have seen that too. This one, I've, I've been looking forward to asking this one for the two of you because every everybody else's answer was either Andrea or Donna. So um, you're, who is your greatest of all time strong woman and strong man? Oh, no way. Um, <laughs> Off you go, Andrea. <laughs> Andrea doesn't know anybody, so it's like a difficult <laughs> question. <laughs> My strong woman's going to be um, Donna, because she's probably the only person that's <clears throat> been better than me over the years. Um, not only that, I just uh, Donna's got a really great work ethic, and it's something that a lot of people admire. It's something that I probably would never be able to do. I think it's just the mindset that she has, so it's, that's really Aww. good to see. Thank you. Obviously, you're going to pay me later for saying this. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> um, strong men. I think I look up to Loz. Loz has been my my favourite strong man. Um, he's kind of done it all. He's been there. He's done it all. And now he's giving me his worldly tips. Yeah. So he's my favourite. He's a lovely <laughs> guy as well, isn't he? Yeah. Um, so my strong woman, obviously, it's quite extensive. Um, I... For the people that have kind of gone before, I suppose, Jill Mills, Kristen, uh, Gemma uh, Magnuson, or Gemma Taylor, um, sorry. And then the people that have come along with me, like on this journey, it's very, very like, mine's a bit different. So obviously Andrea, we've met along the way. And it's nice to say that we do get, we do get on. We get, <laughs> we get on quite well. And as you can probably see, so, um, that's nice and they're the people that you take the inspiration from because they're really really good and you can still look to people who are new new into the sport as well that are you know up and coming and they're doing some really good things so it's nice to like admire other people as well so that's my like the way that I see because I just like I love it <laughs> so um <laughs> and with the strong man oh it's very difficult for me to say that I always enjoyed watching uh, Marius Pujanowski, but not so much. He doesn't really like women in, women doing strong women. So it's oh, uh, right. kind of like a, a double-edged sword there. <laughs> so as an athlete, he's uh, he's very, very, very good, obviously. Um, but I like Brian Shaw and obviously I love Luke. So yeah. um, Luke is, is mine. And that's um, it. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, favourite cheat meal? Favourite what? Cheat meal. Cheat um, meal. Cheat. 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 Cheat meal. Cheat. Cheat. <laughs> I was trying to lip read as well. Um, I love pizza. I love a pizza. Uh, well, I don't know. It's something that I would take my fancy. Turkey like mints on the side. Yeah, turkey <laughs> mints on the side. Um, I'm a bit more of a sweet sweet tooth. I would rather have like ice cream and a lot of it and brownies. Mm trifle cake things like that <laughs> <laughs> your favorite animal um elephant and a dog because i got <laughs> five of them well you're five i thought yeah. it was like two no <laughs> definitely not <laughs> <laughs> um your where am i at? person you most admire doesn't have to be in the sport just in in general life Oh, it's my mama, probably. Oh. Mm -hmm. She's got her shiz together. I hope that eventually, maybe in 20 years' time, I'll have mine the same way. <laughs> um, do you know what? I, I admire Oprah Winfrey. Mm -hmm. I've nice. always looked up to her. She's always, I think, she's been quite a big part of my life, like with, with the family, and my mum was quite into her when I was a child, and... She's kind of just been around. Um, so I've kind of followed her journey. So I've quite looked up to her. She's done a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of people. Yes, she has. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your favourite uh, season? Jesus, the head's gone off me. Favourite season? I know your um, answer. Summer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't probably know your answer to you, Donna. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I like oh, well, I like summer, summer too. Anything that where it's not raining, to be to be fair, any that's any season. Don't mind the weather. Any weather, don't rain. <laughs> yeah, and that that rounds it up. That is um, all the questions. Thank you very much, ladies, for joining me. It has been no an absolute problem. pleasure. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I have, and I hope yeah, I didn't have. ramble on or <laughs> or anything like that. Um, but yeah, um, thank you, and hopefully get you on for a part two again. Yeah, it was really nice to do a podcast with um, Andrea together. It's something that nobody else has done. So I think it was a a, a good idea that you had. So uh, thank you for thank you for that. No problem. Definitely. It's been great. It has been. Um, I will stop the recording now. Thank you for listening. Now don't forget to subscribe and ring that wee bell. Ding ling.